Hey everybody, hey, it's Barry here again, and uh, today I want to talk about creating new thinking um, bridges and in our brains. And um, I remember the story, uh, and it was a small rope bridge, and it had only three wires. You know, one wire where you could place your feet, and then two higher wires to the left and to the right, um, where you could hang on and, and get some sort of balance and you'd stretch your arms out and you'd you'd walk across. Um, it wasn't actually that high. The wire wasn't that high. It was only about sort of five feet off the ground. But it was high enough that um, on this confidence course, it provided a little bit of a ch challenge. You see, I used to be a pastor of a group where most of the people involved had some pretty serious long-term mental health illnesses and struggles. Most of the people I supported had um, anxiety, depression, uh, PTSD, schizophrenia, addictions, personality disorders, or something else that just made life hard for them. And uh, twice a year, we would go away on a camp and uh, to this lovely sandy beach, <laughs> fishing, uh, really good food and fun, and this confidence course. And we would uh, then invite people to try and take the rope bridge. And with several helpers, we would encourage people to, to climb up this quite difficult ladder uh, to the top step and then the next to step out on the wire and to put their hands out and just to step one foot out onto the wire and then the next foot and the next foot. And look, you could see the, the fear absolutely etched on their faces. Um, and we would tell them that they were doing great and just to keep focused on, on looking at the end and tell them to just take one little step at a time. Yeah, you know, we'd even hold the wire the, the, where the feet were placed uh, to stop it from wobbling for some of them. And uh, yeah, the bridge would wobble and shift, but with every step, uh, that walker would uh, inch their way across. And, you know, we took photos and we celebrated and high fives at the end, and then um, they might, Come back a little bit later and give it another go and give it another go and and for some it became a goal that every time they went to camp was to walk the wire bridge because they they were learning something new in themselves they were learning some new confidence new some new ability uh that they never thought they would be able to do and for many of them they had to stop listening to the worst words that they had rep been repeating to themselves what are the worst words well, I think the worst words anyone can say are, I can't change, or words to that effect such as, that's just who I am. Um, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> and I like to say to people that say they can't teach an old dog new tricks, is that they're not an old dog. <laughs> yeah, it really disappoints me because it speaks to me uh, a belief of hopelessness, uh, despair, and defeat that they are sort of locked into a set of thinking and behavior habits and i wouldn't i just want to whisper and maybe even shout resurrection <laughs> into those neurons uh, bringing new life and hope and often when i used to pray for people i would pray for the smallest possible little little change in the micro neuron in their brain and pray that that would be the beginning of great things. One of the most informative videos about how we learn something new comes from Dr. Robert Winstone in his series, The Human Body. And it's all about how we learn. And if you come over to the website, turningthepage.co.nz, instead, you'll be able to actually watch that video. It's not very clear, but it's a very informative video. And what he does is he takes us into the mountains and to some rock climbing to a ravine. So I thought I'd just read out the transcript. If you want to look at it, you need to come over to the website and have a look. But he says this, learning something new means rearranging the way our brain works. Our brain has an astonishing 100 billion neurons or brain cells all connected together. Learning is about creating and strengthening pathways through these neurons for impulses of electricity. But between each and every connection, in our brains is a tiny gap called a synapse. For any of us to learn something new, the electrical signal has to jump across this gap to continue its journey. 
The gap between the two cells is tiny. It's very, very small. But that doesn't mean it's straightforward for a signal to get from one side to the other. For us, it's like crossing the deep ravine and getting from one side to the other should tell us something about the way we learn. And there, in this picture, he in this video, he takes you to a deep ravine and they start making a wire bridge or a rope bridge across. And so we carry on. The first time a signal crosses from one brain cell to the other demands the most effort. And it's the same when we cross our ravine, that first rope, thrown it over. The first trip across is the hardest. And having crossed that ravine once, the journeys across get easier and easier. And a similar thing happens when we learn something new. And in the video, they, they're throwing ropes back and forth and they're moving back and forth and they're, they're building um, a very, very strong rope bridge. And in the end, it's actually got planks you can actually walk across. You know, having crossed the ravine, the journeys get across easy and easier. And a similar thing happens when we learn something. To start with, learning is difficult, but as a signal crosses the gap between the brain cells again and again, we establish a more solid pathway. By the time we have made the crossing over and over again, it becomes effortless, and we can do it whenever we like. And <laughs> yes, in the video, there's this, this picture of this rope bridge with planks on it, with walls on it, sides on it, and they can just walk across back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and it's so solid, so secure. And because they have repeated that, that learning over and over and over again. You know, watching that video, and I've watched it quite a few times now, I made, I've, I've got these seven observations. Firstly, a conscious decision needs to be made. You know, it's a choice you have to make to begin thinking differently. So do you want to think differently? Yes or no? It's a choice. Number two, a behavior change is required. You can talk about change as much as you like, but following through with behavior and taking action is where it's at. For me, it is reading my thinking compass every day. It's me saying to the synapses that in my gray matter that this matters. And I prayerfully ask God to create the new pathway in the brain. Number three, it takes effort. Look, we want to, we want change to happen magically, don't we? But it will require effort on our part to build new pathways in our thinking. Fourthly, it takes time. Look, it's going to take around about 60 to 70 days to get that pathway slotted in and on autopilot pilot, and, and the old one pruned apart. It's just going to take time, but it's always just one day at a time. <laughs> Number five, repetition strengthens the path. In the video, we saw how with each crossing, the strength of the bridge increased. From a single rope, it then became a bridge with planks you could walk across, maybe even run across. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It was a purposeful repetition that built the strength of that bridge. Number six, old pathways slowly lose their power. You know, we used to go this way in our thinking, but now we have a better route. I used to crawl, <laughs> but then I found walking to be better. And walking is now my automatic default way of moving about. You know, and when I talk about this with others, I like them to imagine that the old wire bridge, the old thinking pathway bridge, is falling into disrepair. You know, it's got cobwebs growing over it. It's not getting maintained. It's slowly... And surely over time, it loses its appeal and it falls apart. Number seven, encouragement from others helps build the bridge. Look, I'm glad that Rob Winston had someone helping him build his bridge. It's precisely, in the video, there's this other guy um, helping him build the bridge. No, it's precisely the same when we are learning something new and creating new pathways. To have a guide, a coach or a friend that cheers us along in our thinking will re help us reinforce our new life. One of the little thinking coaches that I have in my daily thinking compass is this. Life happens one thought at a time by default or by design. Look, many of my default thinking pathways have a negativity bias to them. But I, I know that I can change the way I think and act. It's my brain and it's my responsibility so... 
I choose to live my life by design. My brain is rewiring itself with a sense of design. I want to think about whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable. And that, look, if there's anything excellent and if there's anything worthy of praise, I want to think about those things. <laughs> That's Philippians 4 verse 8. Our thoughts can, t can take us to both the best and worst of places. But we can create new thinking paths and require a plan to bridge the synapse gap. Look, mental health is proactively creating new thinking pathways in the same way a new bridge, rope bridge, is made. Here's some quotes for you to consider. You are the creator of your thoughts, and it's your thoughts that can create the future that you want. It really is in your control. Dr. Shannon Irvin. If it's been learned, it can always be unlearned, e.g. ways of coping, personal habits, survival kits, and nasty addictions. David Riddell. A changed life demands new understandings in a place where you need them. Store them up now and lubricate them by revision. <laughs> lubricate them. <laughs> David Riddell. And the chief thief is always the belief, belief beneath. The subconscious is always the power behind the decisions we make and the outcomes we experience. That's David Riddell again. Questions to answer. How much do you think you are in control of your thoughts? Two, what did you learn from um, this blog, the video? Three, is there some thinking habit that you need to unlearn by creating a new neural pathway? I hope you found this helpful and um, always love to hear from my uh, readers and listeners and viewers. <laughs> uh, the email address is barry at turningthepage.co.nz. And just, just want to say a really big thank you to those people who uh, support Turning the Page, either via Patreon um, and other ways. But really, thank you so much. And um, if you'd like to learn how to be part, part of my team, then come over to turningthepage.co.nz forward slash support. Hey, and until next week, I pray that you may um, start creating new thinking bridges in your brain. And if you need to learn any more or need to talk about this a bit more, hey, just email me. Love to hear from you. It's barry at turningthepage.co.nz. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>